Welcome back to the next session, the 15th one on this uh, fusion uh, procurement implementation. We have completed all the activities on purchase orders. Now we are jumping into receiving. Now. So we are going to go with the receiving. So let me begin my activity on this now. So let me log into the system now. GMT underscore EMP1 and then it's Oracle one three. So to perform a gate reset as well as your other activities, EMP underscore EMP1. JMT underscore EMP1. Let me see whether I have done any password problem. I'm sorry. You know, go to the notepad. Oh God, it is in caps. Caps lock is on. <laughs> like because my uh, keyboard does not have any caps lock indication now. So caps lock was on. Right? So come on a bit. So J15 underscore EMP1. So before we begin it, what happens is they have added this data access now. Fine, data access is there. So we'll now go on and have a look at the data access again. There's a new addition in uh, uh, release 12 now. We go to the setup and maintenance, and then the data access has been added now. Manage percentage, data percentage, access percentage entry. So if you don't give the data access for users, what happens? You'll not be able to uh, see the other. So you know. So go to the manage data access for users, and then you go to the users with data access, and then I'll not go to query the user. Now find J50 underscore EMP1, and then give a tap. So click on it, and then J50 underscore EMP1, and then give a tap, and then click on search now. It will be showing you this now. So this many data access are being given. So inventory manager, I have now given J0, J501. So let me go on then uh, give this one, fine, go there. No, add 500 also and then show it to you. Fine. So without adding it, it will not show you, fine, go there, no, go to the waves one. And then without adding it, what happens if you go there, you will be able to see this one, fine, go there. <clears throat> you click on the home icon and then click on the product management. And then uh, keep, click on the product management. Welcome back, Rubish. We are now into receiving now. Go to the product management. And then here I go to the uh, what happens product management. Not so sorry. I go to the warehouse operations and then go to the inventory. So what happens? Organization J501 will be coming automatically over here. Go there. Organization J501 will be coming. So the moment I add more organization, what happens? You'll be getting the change org again also. Right? Organization is coming. So let me go and then add more org. I click on plus and then let me add one more org. Now. It's J50 underscore EMP1. <clears throat> and then give it a tap. So it's for the inventory manager, IMB, give a tap. Ah. Inventory manager, select it, and then click on OK. And then I will now choose the J500 also, inventory organization, and then go for J500, and go there. And then click on Save and Close now. So I added this now. So here, what happens, you go there, I will now go to the receipts. In the receipts, you're having only J501. And then here, what happens if you go into the inventory org, you'll be having a change org icon also. The change org also is fine. So, with the change org, what happens? You can very well change the org also. So, if you have it, what happens? You cannot choose this now. So, here you'll be having drop down, you'll be having wherever you're having access, they will be shown over here. So, likewise, what happens? These are all the entities which are now the inventory org, the results, the warehouse agent, etc. etc. are now what happens? Having a control of this org access. What is not so you go there, let me receive that unnecessary one now. <clears throat> Click on search, and then two inventory managers are given now. Click on search again. <clears throat> so one inventory manager over here. Come on, where is the other one? 
five zero one five hundred. Okay, man. You select it and then you delete it. You go delete it. What is this? Delete icon is not there. There is no such delete icon. Actions okay, man. Go there. So you can even detach this to a bigger one. Click on detach and then what happens? Bigger detach it. And then there you can even see this one. <coughs> Inventory manager five hundred. कैसे करना है यार समझ में आया नहीं सो फाइनल आई वांट टू डिलीट देयर इज नो सच डिलीट थिंग इज देयर इज ओनली टू एक्सपोर्ट एक्सेल इन द प्रीवियस एग्जांपल टच दिस इज व्हाट एक्सपोर्टिंग इट एक्सेल एंड देन ब्रिंग इट बैक इन द एक्शंस व्हाट हैपेंस यू क्रिएट ओनली दैट मींस व्हाट गिवन मींस गिवन दैट्स ऑल ओके सो आई यू जस्ट थिंक व्हाट हेलो नाना देयर इज अ रिवोक ऑप्शन सो डज दैट ऑप्शन वर्क फॉर डिलीट इन द एक्शन Oh ho oh, oh. ho! Action revoke is there, ah? Okay, okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Fine. Revoke did as a as a yes, sir. Revoke will work definitely. Revoke is one. That's correct. Revoke is working. Fine. Good, good, good. And go there. And then you go there. And then here I will now go again back to results and then come back to inventory. Maybe revoking will not work. Revoke is the same thing. Click on the inventory and go there. Poem the gone. The change organization is now gone. Fine. No more there. That's it. Thank God. So we go there. Click on it. Now what happens? This is the way we are doing now. We are doing that. Now we will now go go to the task. Now fine, click on it. The first one is what the direct receipt loading. So go to the setup and maintenance, and then what happens? We now go to the manage receiving parameters. We are now going to begin with the direct receipt loading. Manage percentage, receiving percentage, para percentage. Then entry. So manage receiving parameters. So click on it, and then what happens? We are now opening it up. <coughs> so here, what happens? We are now we are going to begin with the thousand. Direct delivery. So when they make a purchase order, what happens? It will be having a direct delivery on this. So we go there. Let us now go on and make a purchase order. Click on done. Another. <coughs> so the data access has been introduced, and then so many things it has to be added now. Uh, there is no real documentation there. Maybe if I go through the implementation, it will be showing it to you. So this is a new addition in release two actually. So click on done. And then here, what happens? We go to the home page. And then I go to the procurement. And then I go to the procurement. Fine. Go to the click on procurement. And then let me create a purchase order now. I'll click on it. I'm not going to go with it. Create a purchase order. So we are in the process of testing the direct receiving now. Fine. Click on it. And then we'll now go and then click on create order now. Create order. They're creating it now. So I'm going to make a standard purchase order, and then I will use the same supplier of J50, and then go ahead and then create the order. Now I go there. J50 is the purchase order supplier, and then giver will be doing it. Fine. Go there. Click on it, and then click on create now. They're creating it now. It's a purchase order type style. <coughs> go there. And then here, if you go down and then see, it's not fine. Go there. It is now going and add it. Now fine. Click on plus, and then let me add it. Now. The DFF is the same like what happens. We are saying it. So manage requisition descriptive flex field is for requisition, and then manage a document flex field or something like that will be there or purchasing flex field. So that is for uh, purchase orders. Actually, you can try those things. J50, and then I'll now populate item number one now. So it's now coming. Item one, the top one, go there. The category everything is coming. I'll now go for hundred quantities now. <clears throat> go there. It's now coming. I go to the schedule, and then here what happens? I'll now populate the this thing now. This icon is not working. I don't know why. It's so fine. it is in the, one of the live instance also. It's now having the same problem now. So I will not say on. I want is on twentieth. Fine. I am on eleven. Iphone. I will not say some date. I need a some date. So the requested date or the promised date is not good. Fine. I will now make it as what. Uh, uh, one second. I will now make it as was twenty third or something like that. I am not sure. Fine. Twenty third. So I am now making it as twenty third now. Fine. What is? And then I'm not giving the dates. And then here, what happens? You go there and then edit on this now. Fine. Click on the schedules and then edit on the schedules. And then ensure that the direct delivery has got defaulted now. Fine. From the receiving parameters has now got defaulted. Fine. Go there. And then click on what? Okay. And then I'm not going to submit now. I'm going to save it now. So let me save it and then submit it now. Fine. Click on submit. I'm going to submit. So two zero zero nine PO is not getting submitted for approval. And then what happens? It'll be getting approved for approval. Not having any issues. And then so what happens? Two thousand nine is not done. Now what happens? We go there, and then you know, happen one more thing. Fine, go there, go to the. Now we will now go to the receiving now. Fine, we are going to have a receiving. Look at the receiving now. Fine, go there. First, we are now we will now go there. Go to the warehouse operations, then go to the inventory, and then have a look at the stock of this item now. So go to the warehouse operations, and then have a look at the stock. Fine, click on the inventory, and then have a look at the stock. So once when you have a look at the stock, go to warehouse operations, the inventory. Here what happens? You now populate the item over here now. J fifty underscore item one. 
and then you tap. And then I'm now seeing one hand in the, in the receiving section and then the inbound. Right? All three, I'm going to check it. I click on search now. It will show you everything over here now. So here, as of now, what happens? It is not showing inbound is 1116 now. Right? If you expand it, what happens? You won't find anything at all. So the inbound details you can see on the bottom now. Fine, there is one thing called command called inbound. If I click on the inbound details, it will not show you which are all the purchase orders which contribute to this 1116. It will not show you all the POs. And this facility is not, of course, it's also available in eBay's for example, you go on the Korean item, you will not find all the POs basically. And it's almost exactly equal to what we have in eBay's basically. I will now have one more thing and then what happens as of now, nothing is there and the stock, everything is in inbound now. So I will now go. 2009 is a purchase order, latest purchase order which I made now. So the, we're now giving a zigzag manner. So we have got 100 quantities, which is having a direct result floating. And go there. And then now we'll now go there. You can see this now. <clears throat> we go there. And then we'll now have a look at it. And go to the waves. Now I'm going to receive in the gate now. So receiving in the gate is enabled now. And we'll now go on the receiving the gate. And go there. So here, I will now click on the warehouse operations. And then here, I will now go to this place. And then go to the warehouse operations and go to the receipts now. Click on receipts. Now we are going to perform a receipt in the gate. Let us now perform the receipt in the gate. Fine. So the organization is already chosen. Otherwise, we have to choose the organization. You click on the task carousel, and then here what happens? You go for what? Receive expected shipments. Receive expected shipment is the one. You go there. You go there. And then here what happens? You go there. 2009. And then give a tap. And then click on search. As of now, it will not show you anything at all. If you click on search, what happens? It will not show you anything. Because what happens? The due date is what? Today and the next three days only. So make it as blank and then make a search. Make the due days blank and then make a search, it will not show you because we need it on 23rd now. So it is not today or next three days. It go on the cloud and what happens will show you. Select the line. Fine. And then perform a receive. So select the line and then click on the receive. We go to the next screen for receiving it now. So on the receiving screen, what happens? You can now see this now. Fine. And then you can now click on the show receipt quantity. Fine. How much is now expected from the supplier? It will not show. If I click on the show receipt quantity, it will not show you the quantity here. 100 is expected. And go there. And then here, what happens? Since it is a direct delivery, the destination is inventory. The destination is inventory. If you click on the create receipt, it will you have to specify the sub inventory. If you don't specify the sub inventory and then click on receipt, uh, create receipt, it will not say cheapo. I will not do it. You must have first of all the sub inventory. So without a sub inventory, you cannot do it. Fine, go there. And then drop it down and then choose the sub inventory over here now. Fine. It is an asset sub inventory. And go there. Click on create receipt. So I am now going to create a receipt now. So on the next line, what happens? I'm going to give the shipment number given by the supplier as one, two, three, or something like that, packing slip number. I'm going to provide shipping method. If you have, what happens? You can do it. If you configure the shipping method, you can do it. No, I think we have configured the J50. No? You see, J50, you must see if it comes or not. It's not there at all. J, you can click on search. The shipping method has not been configured, so it's not there. So you can leave it blank. Fine. How many number of packing slips? Fine. How many number of supplier packing units? Now, so three is there. Fine. Go there. And then here we go there and then give it now. And then uh, give the shipment date, fine, whatever date is there, pay bill number, fine. And then go there, bill of lading number, fine, whatever there. And then now some notes, fine, give everything. And then later on, what happens? You cannot use uh, your uh, report making capabilities to what happens, uh, retrieve all this information, fine, all this, what else. You go there and then submit this concurrent, submit this page now, fine. So 2009 is a PO and then click on submit, what happens? The GRN gets created. The GRN will be having a number of 1000 now. So 1001, sorry, 1001 is the number. I have no number of lines is one of my Click on OK. So the GRN is now created. I click on that. And then we go to the inventory and then have a look at it. Now go to the manage funds. Then have a look at it. So here, what happens? You can now manage funds. So you go there. And then here, you can very well see this one. Here, what happens? You go there. And then make a requery on this one. In the advanced like, item quantities, if you go there, what happens? You go there. You see this one. <sighs> Again, make a search for it now. It says that on hand is 100 now. And if you expand it, it will not show you the sub inventory also. So if you expand it, if you have got locators and other controls, what happens? We're showing you which and everything. It is equivalent to the material workbench of eBus basically. The material workbench will be showing all the things. Fine. So out of one 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 six one zero one six is only inbound hundred as a thing. This is on direct reserve protein. Now if you go there and then here, what happens? You make a change on this one. Fine. You go there. Uh, in this one, what happens? We make a change to what happens? Standard. We make a change to standard. When you make a new purchase order, the standard will default. So now what I will do is I will now make a repeat of this. No fine. I will now go and make a repeat. I click on it. And then I will now go to what? Uh, I go to manage orders. And then here I will now perform a repeat. Now I go there. Click on manage orders. I will now query the 2009. And then give it a tap. And then find it out now. Order number. And then click on search. Manage orders. And now search again. Select it. And then I am going to duplicate it. Go to actions. And then go to duplicate. It is a repeat purchase order. Actions duplicate is a repeat purchase order. I am going to repeat it now. Fine. 
I'm going to make a new order now. So go there, new order there. Here, what happens? The same thing is repeated. You go to the schedules. And then here, what happens? You go there and then you need to find go there. Click on edit now. Go down. And then here, what happens? You make it what? Standard. So standard purchase order is now made. Fine, go there. I will now click on OK. And then click on submit. 2010 is now getting submitted. And then it will be approved. You won't be having any problem. Now, what happens with the standard purchase order? I'm going to receive as well as correct also. I'm going to do two activities now, find receive and correct. So you can go there. There is one document on this now. <clears throat> go there and then see this now. So in this one, fusion to what happens? You have one document on receiving. You open up the receiving document. In this, what happens? We are going to perform the receipt as well as corrections in the standard receipt. Double thing on it. We are going to perform a receipt as well as corrections. So the standard is putting there. So here, what happens? I'm going to perform receipt and corrections. So receipt is there, but I will now combine the receipt and corrections together. Now we we are expecting hundred over here now. Fine. First of all, I know perform the receipt over here now. Fine. The receipt. Okay. First, I will now perform the standard receipt loading, and then afterwards I will now perform the correction. So what happens? The supplier is now supplying only ninety over here now, to ninety. So let me receive only ninety against this two thousand ten. Fine. Go there, and then let me receive only ninety against this. So you go there and then not do this now. <clears throat> so go there and then here what happens? I'm going to receive it now. Fine, go there in this place. I have no go to this place. I'm in the receipts now. Fine, go there. Click on the find expected shipments. Receive expected shipments. 2010 is the purchase order number 2010 and then give it a tap and then make it as blank and then for it now. Fine. It will be coming. So the first stage I'm going to make a gate receipt. So I will now make a gate receipt. Select it and then what happens? You go and then make a gate receipt. And then on the receiving area, what happens if you click on the show receipted quantity? What happens? It will show you the expected uh, shipments from the supplier. Now, 100 is expected. Now, supply 90 only. His delivery channel is having 90. Here, if it is going to be the gate receipt only, what happens? The supplementary will not come at all because we are now going to send it to the receiving section. And what is. So, click on create receipt now. So, click on create receipt. And then here, what happens? You fill up everything and then click on submit. What happens? 90 is now getting received. So, 1002 is now submitted for this. Now, fine. Go there. Receipt number is GRN number is 1002. And go there. And then click on that. And then come all the way. 90 is received. So if you go to the corrections area, fine, go there. You go to the what happens? The correct results. So task carousel, and then click on correct results. And then I'm going to query on this 1002 GRN number. 1002 GRN number. If I'm going to make a query, if I click on search, I'm going to show you this. So we have one GRN number. One, one, one number has been done. So from the gate, what happens? It does not come to the receiving section now. <coughs> it does not come to this one. So it does not come over here now. Fine, what else? So it does not receive. 90 is now there end quantity of this transaction type. So received is a transaction type. For the transaction type, the end quantity is 19. Now out of which what happens, what I'm going to do is I will not perform a delivery. I will not perform a delivery now. Go there. Let me deliver only 75 quantities in the inventory. I'm going to only deliver to the 75 quantities. So let us go there and then deliver it. Now. Click on done. And then let me put away. This process is known as a put away. I click on it and then I'm going to put away. Now. Click on it. So put away results the process by which what happens, I'm going to put away this one, uh, 1002 GR and hour. Put away results. No going there. I will now query on the GRN number and go there. Click on search now. It's all almost exactly similar to what we have in EBS now. EBS and I think everything is the same now. There's no change at all. And then click on put away. So in the put away, it shows the result number as well as the PO number. 90 quantities available there. Fine. So here, what happened? 90 is not shown here. What happens? What happened? I'm not receiving 75. I'm not delivering 75. So the moment the inventory, what happens? We have to pop it in sub inventory. If the destination is inventory, what happens? You pop the sub inventory. And then click on submit. By which what happens? 75 gets delivered. Click on submit. Click on OK. Fine, click on done now. It's not done. Now, if you go on, then have a look at the corrections now. Fine, click on it and then go to the correct receipts now. You go to correct it now. Fine, click on correct receipts. And then 1002 is a 1. And then give it a And then click on it. What happens? You'll be having two lines now. So, one is a received transaction type, one is a delivered transaction type. The received transaction type is now having a balance of 15 only because 75 is already delivered. The delivered transaction type has already delivered 75. So, at the end of it, what happens? We are having 75. So in EBIS, it is not shown as a parent quantity. Now here, what happens is only shown as a quantity. The parent quantity of a transaction type is nothing but a balance quantity of a TT at the time of query. So it is exactly behaving like what you have in EBIS now. So it shows you the sub inventory also, 15 and 75 are there. So we are expecting 10 in the gate. And then what happens in the receiving section, we have 15. And then the inventory, we have 75. So this is what it is. So the equation is what? So the equation is what? The generic equation is like this now. The PO quantity is nothing but expected receipts in the gate. The quantity lying in the receiving section plus quantity delivered is the
So it is a golden rule in uh, receiving actually. Now we will not perform a correction. Now, what happens? The supplier has now supplied something wrong. 90 quantities, what happens? Something is wrong. So here, what happens? When the inventory, I go and then make a check of it. When I make a check and then I find that what happens? Three is missing. The supplier is not responsible for the missing three. The receiving section becomes responsible because what happens? The receiving section has touched the material and then delivered it. So the moment the receiving section touched the material and then delivered it, what happens? They become responsible. So the missing three will be is supposed to be in this place now. It will be 15 plus three will be the receiving section only. So let us go on and perform this first correction now. And now go on and perform this first correction. Go there. So I will now select it and then click on correct. Now. Click on correct. sound if I am going to correct it. Fine, select and then click on correct now. I'm going to correct it now. I click on correct. So here what happens? In EBIS, I have to say how much is missing. Right? Missing quantities will be either plus or minus, minus three or plus three. So what happens? There is a very cumbersome process. We have to manually calculate and do it now. Right? Here what happens? Now Abhi Kitna hai over the So you have to directly enter what is the present stock now. So 75 is now you are having a 70 stock of only 72. Right? So this is there, this future is there only in I procurement and not in procurement actually. So the corrected quantity we can enter in I procurement. Whereas in procurement, we have to have a correction quantity only. Right there. So there has been change in infusion of oil procurement service, cell service procurement, everything is now having only the corrected quantity. So it's nicely done. So 75, now only 72 is available. Click on submit. So the three missing will be available on your what happens your receiving section. The transaction, the correction transaction was created. Click on OK. And then go there. You can now see the 15 has now become 18 now. Then go there. So in this 18, what happens? You go there. And then I am going to perform what happens? One more correction now. The two quantities are missing here. So if the receiving section is now missing, you tell me whether the gate is responsible or supplier is responsible. Anybody? If there is a two is missing in the receiving section, can you tell me whether the gate is responsible or supplier is responsible? Because gate also has made a gate. Gate, not nah, fine. You are wrong. <clears throat> gate is wrong. Supplier is only responsible. Point. Why? Gate has made an entry. In the system, what happens? They have taken the delivery challenge from the supplier and then they have made a gate entry fine, for 90 quantities initially. So if something is missing, why gate is not responsible? Can you make a think? Anybody? Any idea? Why gate is not responsible? They are not, they are not inspected anything. Uh, they, it is not like that. They are not even open the consignment actually. Since okay. gate is not opening any consignments, they are only making a paper transaction. On the basis of paper, they are only making it now. Fine. And so what happens? They will never be responsible for any missing quantities. They don't open the consignment and then make a check. Whereas in the receiving section, they are physically receiving the material and then afterwards delivering it. So even though they have not done because of laziness, what happens? They become responsible and something is missing in the inventory. So the two quantities which are missing in the receiving section, the supplier is only responsible. And so it will be expecting as a what? Expected receipt from supplier actually. It will not over there. And then I will now keep a cursor on this place. And then click on correct now. I'm going to make a correction now. And click on correction. So 18, I'm going to say what happens. 16 is a one. The corrected quantity is 16. And then click on submit. So naturally, what happens? The supplier becomes responsible. It does not become 16. Fine, go there. Click on it. And then you can now say <coughs> 72, 16. And then that will be 12. Now. Fine. Or the 90 is now getting in front of it. So if you go there and then query on the gate now. Fine, go there. Click on the receive expected shipments. And then query for the purchase order 2010. 2010, when you tap, and click on search now. You're going to perform search. Oh, sorry, make it blank and then do it now. Search now. now, what happens? 12 is expected from supplier. This completes standard receipt routing as well as corrections. Good. Now, the next topic is return to supplier. We want to return it back to the supplier. Thank God. So now, this is the equation now. 100 is equal to 12 plus 16 plus 1. Now, what happens? I'm now going to return back in this fashion. So, this is the present equation now. 100 is equal to 12 plus 16 plus 1. Fine. So, it what us. And then go down. <coughs> now, what happens? In the in the inventory, what happens? I'm now going to return back four quantities direct to supplier. So, you go there. Let me return back four quantities to supplier. Fine. Click on it. Done. I will now return back direct to supplier. I click on it. I will now go to the returns. Click on return receipts. Now here what happens? I am now going to return back to the supplier directly. Click on return receipts. I will be returning back to the supplier directly. I go there. It's 1002 is the GRM number. And then click on find now. So here what happens? I am going to return back directly to the supplier. So from the delivered one, what happens? I am going to return back four quantities to the supplier. And click on return. 
and then I will take four quantities. He can return it back to either receiving section or supplier. Now I am putting it as a supplier, and then what happens? I am not going to put four quantities. I am going to return back. So click on submit. So four is now going back to supplier from the inventory. This you will do only when you have the packing facility available in your inventory. If packing facility is not available, we cannot perform a receipt to the what happens? Return back to the supplier. You have to only send it to the <coughs> receiving. <coughs> You have to send it back to the receiving section and then from there what happens, you have to perform it. Now I click on submit now. <coughs> not done. So returning back to what happens, your supplier is not done. I click on OK. Not done. You go there and then see this now. Now what happens? I am now sending back two quantities to what? The receiving section. I am now sending back two quantities to the receiving section. I'm here still what happens. You go there, click on return. And then I'm going to send back two quantities to the receiving section now. You go there, make change to receiving, and then send two quantities over here now. And then go there, click on submit. So I'm now sending back two quantities to the receiving section, click on submit. It is not done. So we are not done two returns now, one to supplier and one to receiving section. From the receiving section, what happens? Three quantities I'm going to send to supplier. From the receiving section, I'm going to send three quantities. So keep your cursor on the receive transaction type and then click on return now. From the receiving section, we can supply, send only to supplier and nowhere else. More things coming and go there. Here I'm going to send three quantities over here. So click on submit now. So we can perform a return either from inventory or from the receiving section to the supplier. So we are now having an equation of 6615 and go there, 6615 in the gate. If you go on and query, it will be 19. So click on done now. And then you go to make a query in the gate. Fine. Click on this task carousel and then go to the receive expected shipments. 2010 is the P1 number. <coughs> and then go there. <coughs> <coughs> make a search for it now. You'll not find 19. This completes return to supplier. Any questions? Good. So we'll now go hard on the next topic now. Fine. Next is inspection receipt routing. We're going to make the receipt routing as inspection receipt routing. I've not, not written anything on this topic. We just go through this. Done. There are so many blah blahs are there. Fine. Go and then read all those things. And go there closer. Now what happens? You go there and then I go to the manage orders. I'll now create. Fine. Select it and then I'll now make what happens? Repeat purchase orders. Go to action and then repeat. And click on duplicate. I'm going to give a duplicate now. I'm making a repeat order. Go down and then here select it and go to the schedules now. Select and then click on edit. Go down and then make the receipt routing as what inspection required. So, reserve inspection required. Fine, click on OK now. So, here submit it 2011. I'm submitting it for approval now. It is now approved. Fine, click on OK. So, here what happens? We go there and then see the inspection result. And go there over, over your results now. So here I'm going over there. We click on it and then let me perform a receipt on this. One more thing. Uh, I'm sorry, no, go there. Okay. Click on receipt expected shipments 2011. Find it out. Okay. It's still not come at all. Fine. It's not yet approved now. I have no approved it. And then go there. I have to wait for some time now. Oh, whatever. The number is it not yet come? Hey, come on. 2011 only. And then the orders. Go oh, there. This is expected shipments. Click on done and then come out of it. And then requery it. So click on it. Click on receive expected shipments. 2011. And then give it a tap. So now it is expected. And go there. Make it as null and then click on it. It is the inspection is a product. Fine, go there. And then you select it and then I'm going to inspect it. Okay, click on receive now. So show receipt quantity will not show you everything. You go there. I will not make 100 itself. And here sub inventory cannot be given order when you go to the receiving section. And then you click on the create receipt for the 2010 and 2011, isn't it? 2011 document. Click on create receipts. And then here you go there and then do it now. <clears throat> So go there and then click on submit. What happened? The next GR number is now getting created. So 1003 is for reserves. Right? Now, if I try to go and then try to put away this, you cannot do it. No. You cannot put away and go there. You click on this and then what happens? You go and then put away. Put away is not possible because inspection and then put away is a, is a route. Right? Put away is not possible if it is the inspection result. Right? Click on it and then 1003 and then say, <clears throat> go there. 1003 and then give a tab and then click on search. It will now say, Poda Ponga. I will not show you anything at all because this is not inspected now. So only after inspection, what happens? You can do it now. Click on done, and then let us now perform the inspection. Click on it now. 
and then you know inspect the results of this 1003 grn number now click on inspection results and now go to wait find 1003 and then give a tap and then click on search now and now go to give a search you know find a line now so i am going to inspect it select the line and then click on inspect and click on inspect and i'm inspecting it what about the noc i will not split the line now find go there good actions and then go to split line now split line click on split line let me split it do so what about the noc Uh, five quantities and go to split now. Split new onto new line five quantities, so it will become ninety five and five now. So ninety five, what happens? I am going to accept and then I will not put the quality as what above average. And then here, what happens? I am going to make a reject and then what happens? The five quantities now reject and go there and then choose appropriate one. Fine, I am going to what happens? Uh, uh, unacceptable or whatever it is. Fine, go there and then click on submit. So the inspection process is now getting complete. The accept and reject as inspection status. And remember, whatever is accepted can be delivered, and then whatever is rejected also can be delivered. Fine. Because what happens? The inspection team has now rejected it. Let us say there is a small crack in the top of the monitor. But when you switch on the monitor, is all working fine, and the crack is not going to cause anything. And so the requester may even accept the rejected of the quality department. Okay. Because the requester is the ultimate in the procurement life cycle. And so what happens? You can even override the inspection department's recommendation. So it will not done fine. Go there. We will not try to go and then do a put away. Now I click on it and then I will not put away. Click on the put away. Put away results. And then 1003 is the GR number. Fine. Go there. Now it will be available. Fine. Go there. When I and then say Jim Boom Ba and then click on such. Previously it was not coming. Now it will come because no inspector. So you go there. You select the line and then click on put away. I am going to put away now. It will not reflect on the inventory stock now. I go there and then I go there and then make an inventory and then put the sub inventory over here now. You click on the sub inventory and then click on submit now. So it's not getting submitted. Similarly, the five quantities also can be put in. Fine, go there. The five quantities which is having a rejected transaction type. Now, fine, rejection transaction type is there. You click on put away. We can even put away even the five quantities which is there. So if you want, fine. Or otherwise, what you can do is you can now put away only three, and then urgently they are required three is required. The only two are really very very defective, and so what happens? I am going to send it back to the supplier. Go there, put the three, and then pop it to submit to the supplier. So the rejections can also be delivered to the inventory. Depending upon the discretion of the requester, actually, when it was not okay, this will not send it back to the supplier. So at any point, I'm not about to go to the managed quantities and then give query. Fine, it will not show you the two the new quantity on the on end now. I click on search, it will not show you. So 17 is now lying in the receiving section now, and then what happens? The 260 board is there on this in the supplement. So it will not show you everything. And then for the entire inbound, what happens? It will not click on the inbound details on the bottom. What happens? It will not show you all the POs which are contributing to the inbound actually. Good, fine. Good. And then there is a correction on the inspection result. Probably is a very tough one. Fine. There is a lab exercise for you. Fine. Uh, I have made this a what happens? Uh, corrections for this one. Uh, there is one corrections. I think one second corrections. Yeah, corrections. The worksheet now. Fine. What are the corrections? The corrections worksheet. You can open it up. And the big one along with the inspection result routing. Fine. That's been uh, done for the SRS actually. SRS was having so many issues of this. On the inspection result, like they were unable to understand where the stock has gone, so they were struggling like anything. So I made this worksheet for them basically, and then explained. One day after the explanation, what happens? It became clear for them. So it is basically a demo on uh, receiving and corrections on the inspection result routing. I just follow the sheet and then try to do each and everything, and then what happens is a big one. We cannot do it. We don't take a long time off now, but maybe uh, it's a. It, you can understand it very clearly. Everything is there, and then it's all there. And then stage by stage, I have shown you the quantities and tried this. And then if you are still finding any problem, you tell me the next week. I will not do it for you again. <clears throat> so the entire correction is not performed again. <clears throat> so it's a big document. And then you can draw. This is the lab access for you. You can try to do this one. Initially, hundred is expected. Then eighty five is delivered. Fifteen is expected from supplier. And then out of eighty five, what happens? We are not performing an inspection of sixty and seventy five. Only seventy five quantities I am taking it. Ten I am giving it over here. Out of sixty and seventy five, what happens? I am delivering forty eight and eleven. So the inventory stock will be going as forty eight and eleven. And then afterwards, what happens? I am not performing a correction of this fifty nine. Fine. And then that will not become uh, what happens? This one, this quantity, this quantity. Like that, what happens? It will not be fully there. And then you will be able to understand it. Fine. You just keep on doing it. You will be able to see how the uh, the, the quantities transition from stage to stage. Basically. Up to the gate. Actually. I'm going to explain over here. Corrections is the document is the lab access for you. Fine, go there and do it. That's all this. So we go there along. We have to look at the worksheet here. Where exactly? Fine, go there. Go there. Go there. Go there. So you have not created everything now. Fine. So the demo everything is not completed. Here, what about the corrections? Return to supplier is not done. The next one is substitute receipts. Now, the substitute receipts is exactly like he was telling. Fine, the substitute receipts. 
So let me create two more items and then do it. Now fine, I have item one. So let me create two more items and then demonstrate the substitute results. So we are going to demonstrate the substitute results and go there. So let me create two more items. Substitute results. So you click on this and then you go to product management and then go to product information management. You go to the product management and then go to the product information management. <clears throat> and then I have item one. Let me create item two and item three. So click on it and then I long click on create item. So let me create item two and then item three and then demonstrate it to you. So organization is J500. And the organization, the master organization will go there. So item class is root item class R O O T. What happens? It's becoming is a mandatory one. You have to get it up and go there. Click on it. And then I will not populate my own template. Now fine, go there. So you have created a create J50 purchase template. Fine, bring it to the item site. It is a selected item. Fine, click on OK. By which what happens? The template will get shifted up on the item. And then it's not giving you a warning. Doesn't matter. Fine, go there. Click on this now. I don't know what to do, how to do this now. Fine, how to deploy it? That's what is asking. Fine, go there. J50 underscore item two is the one. Fine. I don't know. Say second item. We upload the template. Everything is okay. And go down. And then <coughs> the item is a, just a simple item. And then I don't know. I go there. Go to specifications. And I want to give a different price on this now. And go there. Purchase it. Specifications and click on the purchasing. And then I will now make it as two dollars. And go there. And Eve is what happens. They have brought three more attributes. I have already set up the yes in the uh, template itself. Fine. And then they are required. And if you don't give it, what happens? It will not be okay exactly. So allow substitutions, allow an order, then I'll express it. And what is everything has been made as a small fine. Go there. And then in the top, what happens? I go to the associations and then associate to the child org also. Fine. Go to the associations. And then here, what happens? Good actions. And then go to select an ad. Fine. If uh, sometimes my auction button is not working, there is a plus symbol here by which what happens? I'm going to select an ad. Click on this one. And then here, I will now put J501 now. 501. And then you enter now. I'm showing you. So I'm not going to associate with the child or my friend, master and child. Thank you. Applying that. And then now what happens? There's no complete. Fine. Every activity is not complete on this item. Second item is not complete. Fine. Go there. Save and close. Similarly, what happens? I will now create the item number three also. Fine. Go there. Click on item three and then do it. So here, what happens? They go there and then click on item three. Now. So click on create item. I'm not going to create an item. So item three, I'm going to create J500 is the one. And then put a mask over here, root item class now. <clears throat> bring in our template now, fine. Select it and then bring it to the item side. Click on OK. Yes. Go there. It's J50 underscore item. I will now say it's the third item. If I go there. And then go to the associations and then add this association over here. Now I click on the associations and then what happens? I click on the plus now. Click on plus and then let me add the J501 now. So J501. Bishu. Select it and then click on apply and then done. Click on it. Now then go there. I don't know. Make a change of the price now. I'm just want this one. The first one is 1.5, second one was 2, and then the third one was 3. Now. And then again, what happens? All three are enabled over here. Now, fine, go there. So everything is now completed. Fine, click on seven close by which what happens? We are now completed. Create now all the three items. Now, substitutes will be defined only on the master log and not on the child log. Substitute will be defined on the master log. So I go there. You click on the task carousel and then go to what? Manage substitutes. Now. Manage item relationships. In the manage item relationships, I'm now going to define the substitutes. Now, fine, click on the manage item relationships. So let me go and then define the substitutes over here. Now. Manage item relationships. Here, over here. You click on the plus now. I'm now going to define the substitutes over here. Now. Fine, click on plus now. So organization is what? J50. And then if you put what happens, only 500 will come. Over there, all will come. So we can define everything only on the master. So from item, fine, from item, I will now say J50 underscore item one. I will not put the two item. Two item. The two item is what? J50 underscore item two. So I will not say the type is substitute. And there are plenty of types are available here for purchasing. What happens? Only substitute is applicable. And go there. And then do it. So the means means what? The generic relationship is like this now. The two item is related to from item as type. Fine, as type. There is a generic relationship. I will again repeat. The two item is related to from item as type now. So if I put item one on the purchase orders, the supplier can supply item two also. It's because item two is a substitute for item one. 
So the two item is related to form item as a type and you want us click on save and close by which product will be having entry on this. So this is what entry is now. The from item and two item. This item two is a substitute for item one. So if you make it as a purchase order, if the supplier is not having quantity on item one, he is authorized to sub supply item two also. You will be communicating to him also all the substitutes over here now. And then click on plus. I will now make one more relationship. Fine. Once again, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not made as a reciprocal actually. Fine. Let me make it as a reciprocal. Fine. Go there and then click on it. Select the line and then click on it. Let me make it as a edit. I will now make it as a reciprocal. This is for planning enable. Is for planning basically. Fine. Make it as a reciprocal also. Save and close. So the reciprocal is also enabled. Fine. What, what is it? Once again? I will now select it and then click on edit now. So select it and then click on edit now. I am going to edit it now. Hey, come on. It's not coming there. So why? Select it and then click on edit now. I will not detach it and then do it now. Fine, detach it. Select it and then click on edit now. You go to actions and then go to edit now. Come on. Why it's not coming? Otherwise, let me delete and then make it again. Fine, delete it and then make it again now. Nothing is working here. Uh -huh. The edit is not working. Initially it worked and then I was not showing properly. Then close it now. Okay, I will now leave it as is now fine. A reciprocal is not enabled. For the second one, I will now enable the reciprocal. Fine, click on the plus now fine. Okay, I forgot the enable reciprocal fine. Go there. I will now enable this. Fine. Organization is J500. The master org, the only org, what happens is becoming now. There is some problem here. Okay, it's not going to top. So again, what happens? I'm going to put it now. Click on the from item. From items J50 underscore item one. And go there. The two item is J50 underscore item three now. Fine. Go there. Click on it now. So the two item I'm going to put it fine. J50 underscore item three. This time what happens? The substitute is now substitute. This time what happens? I'm enable the substitute. So item three is a substitute for item one. But the ulta relationship is also true. The reverse relationship is also true. Item one can become a substitute for three, and three can become a substitute for one also. So if you enable the receipt, both the directions will be possible. My orders. So this is now there. One and two. One and two has now got one more entry actually. Fine, go there. Let me delete it now. Oh God. Click on delete now. Then you can delete or not. Click on delete. Delete yes. They're now gone. Let me again make it go there. So here I have deleted it now. So let me give a plus and then make it again. They're not coming. One and two, I'm going to make it now. Let's J 500 and then give a tap. Click on it. And then here is J50 underscore item one. This is the item two. Click on it. It's J50 underscore item two. And then make the type as a substitute, and I'm not make enabling it. So the third item is a substitute for one. The reciprocal is also true, whereas for the first and second item, reciprocal is not true. Now, can anybody tell me if I put item one, one on the purchase order, we have got three items, one, two, three. What are all the items we can receive from supplier against one? Anybody? If I have one on the purchase order. What are all the items I can receive on the purchase or on the, on the receiving section based upon the substitute relationship? I guess one, what all I can receive? Either item two or item three, no? Exactly, fantastic. I guess one, one, two, three can be very well received. Fine. One, two, three. If item two is on the purchase order, what all I can receive? If item two is there on the purchase orders, what all I can receive? One and three. Yes. One and three is wrong. One and item two. two uh, item two is there. Item two is there in the purchase order. What all I can receive? Only item uh, one. Only item two. Yeah, it is item two. Only item two. If I have item two on the purchase orders, only item two is now current. Fine. Anjan is very correct. Fine. He is now earlier. When you have one, one and two, you can receive. One, two, three, you can receive. If you have two, I can receive only two. Now tell me if I have three on the purchase order, what are all the things I can receive? I guess three. Yeah. Yes, tell me. I guess three. What are all I can three? Uh, apart from three, what else I can receive? 
Uh, you told something, but I I couldn't listen it exactly. Ah, uh, na na if if uh, item three is on the purchase order, then we can receive only item three. No, we can receive item one also because the receipt exactly. proper is the receipt proper is enabled, so one also can be received. If item three is on the PO, one also can be received. Clear on this now, fine. So if I have item one on the PO, one two three can receive. If I have item three, one and three I can receive. If I have item two, only two I can receive. Is it clear? Any doubts on this now? Well, again repeat. If I have item one on the purchase order, one two three can be received. If it is two, we can receive only two. If it is three, one and three. <coughs> good we are going to experiment on this now fine click on done now i have now defined the item relationships on this area fine in the product management i have gone to the carousel and then what happens i have gone to manage item relationships now let us go there and then we will now go on and create a purchase order now fine go to the manage orders and then here what happens i am going to make all click on it i have now all the all three items over here now we'll go there <clears throat> so click on create order I am going to get an order. So we have already made the uh, what happens the direct result routing as the thing on the receiving result routing. So that will be coming up automatically over here now. And I have not made a change on this now. So that is we can go there. Click on create now. I am going to create a new order now. We are concentrating on the item results and so what happens if not required? I go there and then see this now. And then uh, before we create it, what happens? We will now enable it on the uh, on the receiving parameters also. And I think that is sufficient. But anyhow, what happens? They have given it. I'm not very sure about it. Fine, go there. In this place, what happens? I'm going to enable what? So allow substitute receipts on the receiving parameter. I'm now going to put a tick mark on the allow substitute receipts and then give a save and close now. I'm now saving allow substitute receipts now enabled. Click on done now. I click on the manage receiving parameters and then have a look at it now. Fine, allow substitute receipts and then put a save and close. Now. So it is not done. Now what happens? We go there and then create an order now. It is there everywhere. I think probably in one place it will be sufficient. But you make an exercise. Uh, I think if the item is available, whether the receiving parameter is required or not, make a check. There is a lab access for you. Go there. And then put the supplier over here now. And then click on create now. So we are now going to create now. Fine. Go there. <clears throat> and then here, what happens? You go there. You go to this place. Click on plus, and then let me add all the three items over here now. So first item one now. Fine. This J fifty underscore item one, now. and then you tap, and then I look for hundred quantities now, and then you go to the schedules and then populate the date now. So go there. You can populate the date now. Fine. This twenty five iPhone eleven iPhone seventeen. And then you tap, and then if you go there and then click on the and the on the edit of the schedules now. If you edit the schedules, what happens? You can now see all the substitute got defaulted. Either from the receiving parameters or from the item, it is getting defaulted. Also, just there. Click on OK, and then I will now add two more lines on this one. Let's go there, and then I will now add two more lines. Click on it, and then let me give add now. Go to this place, and then I go to go to the lines. You cannot add in this place. What happens? You go to the lines area, and then add it. Now. Click on the lines, and then we are adding. Click on the lines, and then click on plus now, and go to add it. Now. And the schedules is not there. And go there. Get what I was J fifty underscore item two. Go there. It's for two hundred quantities now, and then go to the schedules and then give a date now. So, what happens? You take a copy of the date, go there, and then here what happens? I'm going to put it now. Fine. Click on this entry, and then I now paste this date over here now. Fine. Paste it over here now, and that's it. What happens? You go there, and then that will be there. As such, now fine. Go there. Click on the lines and then add the third line now. The tick mark will be there in the schedules. Okay, fine. Go there. So click on plus, and then I'm going to add the third line over here now. Go there. It's J fifty. Let's go right on there. So it's three hundred quantities. I'm putting it now. Find the year there. I go there. And then go to the schedules and then give a date now. Click on this area. Request date. And then what happens? It will be coming now. You paste it over here. And then go there. And then save and submit now. Click on submit directly. So two thousand thirty. The unlucky purchase order is now getting submitted. So what happens? You know there. Or your order will be total be exceeding the three thousand limit now. Three <laughs> thousand has got a limit, so because of which is not giving error. So let me first of all save it now, and then uh, dishew out the limit. I click on save now. So let me save it now. It's not done. So we go there, and then it is now uh, the supplier is now having a reference over there. I click on it, and then yeah, manage agreements. Let me open up the agreement, and then dishew out the three thousand like G is doing now. 
He is not having any amount over there. Now, fine. Bindas, whatever you want, you can now do it. Now, fine. What is it? Fine. Click on search now. So, three thousand. I am searching it. It's already available over here now. So, go there. And then here, what happens? I go to actions and then go to edit now. So, edit is not available. Fine. So, edit take on and go here. Action is not getting dropped now. I don't know why it's so. Fine. It is now going to create a change order. Chale ga yar. Okay. Fine. Click on this now. I do it now. Click on this. And then here, what happens? I come there. And then I am now editing it. And then here, what happens? I go there. Amount. This is the one which is now causing all the problem. Agreement amount. Fine. Go there. Remove it here. Fine. Amount limit will be getting copied. Fine. Go there. Otherwise, give a big, big money over there now. Fine. Go there. Normally, it is not correct actually. Fine. You have to give a big money so that whatever you know, anything, whatever you want. With this money, you can even marry Aishwarya Rai. Fine. Go there. <laughs> Click on submit now. So we are given. We are described. Fine. Uh, enhancement. Of amount agreed, fine. Yes. Whatever is the one we give a decision, fine. Cannot submit now. So three thousand is now submitted with the revised amount, fine. Now what happens? We go there and then go back and then what happens? Two thousand thirteen, we go and then query. We can very well do it now. Fine. Go there. Manage orders. I will now go and then query for this now. Fine. Click on search and then two thousand thirteen. I am going to query for it now. So two thousand thirteen, I am now going to query two zero one three and then you tap and hand it out. I am going to search for it. Click on search now. No coming, fine. Select it and then here what happens? I go to edit it directly. It is an incomplete state as I go there. So what happens? It will not be creating any change orders as such now. Go there, no coming. Go there. So here is the orders. And then uh, what happens? I now go to actions, edit, and then submit. And actions, edit, and then submit for approval now. You go to the edit of this and then submit for approval. So this time it will not have any problem at all. No problem in what happens? Limits now. It has been submitted for approval. Now let us go to the receiving and then receive it now. Fine. Go there, go to the receipts now. Go there, expected receipts. Go there, make it. Receive expected shipments for 2013. I'm going to make it now. 2013. Go there. And then click on fine. Oh God, the order is set to come now. Fine. No, the process of approval. Click on OK. Come on. Wow. Click on OK. Now it's come now. My orders. So now it's approved. I mean, click on search because now we need it on a 25th only. So what happens? Uh, we, oh, you have to make it immediately. Now. Then only what happens? I made a 25th order. So I will now select the first item and then click on receive now. Click on receive. First item I'm selecting it and then click on receive. And then here what happens? You go there, drop it down. The magnifier icon, I'm clicking it. What happens? I'm going to make a blank search on this now. And I will now say J50 and then I will now make a search now. It has to show me all the three items now. Oh, what I will do is I will now remove this now and then make a search now. Remove this and then make a search. When oh, no, I is coming, so here what happens if we make an advanced search on this now with the J50? Oh, it's not exactly working. So what happens? I will now make a change to two now, two and then give a tap, it will accept. And then I will now make a change to three and then tap, it will accept. So you can receive anything and then go there, show quantity, show receipt quantity, and then I will receive it now. Whatever there, they go there. So item one is hundred quantities against which what happens? I am now receiving item three and then go there to the inventory and then put the inventory over here. Sub inventory and then click on submit. <clears throat> Create a zip and then submit it. So go for the second item now. Second item, what happens? Uh, you have only a one way relationship now. Fine. This is what it is. So, second item, there is no substitute at all. For this, what happens? There is no substitute at all. If you go to the receive for the second item, what happens? You go there. If you go and then make a change to one, give a tab, you will not say, Poda Bonga. There is no such item at all. You can go there. So if you remove that one and then make a check also, and with the percentage, you can make a search now. You have only two there. Even if you're there, what happens? You go there. You read it and then what happens? I guess two, we can only receive two. Fine, go to that place. And then, oh God, it's only, two is only coming. So go there. And then you know, cancel it. You know, go for the third item now. Go to the third item. But third item, what happens? One can also be received. One and three is possible. Fine, click on this receipt. I will not go there. Receive. If I try to put two here, it will not accept. For three, what happens if you go on the right to put two? It will not accept. You tap, it will not accept. You know, coming over here now, fine. Cancel it. And then if you put one, it will accept. And go there. If you put one, it will not accept. One is accepting it. And go there. 100 points is one to the clear. Something like that. I know what is it. So this completes substitute receipts now. Clear on this now. Get it out. So click on create receipt and then of course continue to complete the receipts now. You must enter a sub inventory for this now.
So next is unordered reception. We go for it. There is no order at all. We are going to receive it now. For which what happens? First of all, we have to enable it in the uh, receiving parameters. So we have to enable the unordered results in the receiving parameters and then do it now and go there. I will now go to this place and then open up the receiving parameters. And then here what happens? The organization must be allowed for unordered results. So once when you allow it, what happens? You go there. In this place, what happens? It will be coming. Unordered results. Now only matching is available. When making an unordered result is not coming, that is a receiving parameter one. So only when you make it, what happens? The second entry will be coming over here now and go there. So let us now make it now. Go there. I will not what allow unordered results. I'm putting a tick mark and then I'm saving and closing. Click on save and close. On the organization, the receiving parameters have now made a change. Now what happens? You go there, you tab out to some other one, go to inventory and then come back to receiving now. Go to inventory. And then now what happens? Come back to receiving. Hey Nana. Yeah. Now create. Uh, do we have these unordered receipts in uh, EBS release 12? What is it? No, no. Do we have these unordered receipts in EBS yeah, yeah. release 12? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Release uh, list 12 also we have it. Okay. Very well do the unordered results in the zip also. Okay. It's exactly the same like what we have in EBS now. It is exactly the same like what we have in EBS. So what about the create unordered results and all like that? And I click on it. So without any order, we are going to receive it now. Objectively, we are receiving it. I click on receive, create an order. I have done it many times in my company. Go there. I will now populate the item over here now. It's J50 underscore item one. Go there. So we go there. Go for sale. There's 85 quantities now. Go there. And then here, receiving location, I have to put it now. Fine. We can only receive it. Fine. We cannot deliver it now. Fine. J50 underscore. What happens? Uh, lock underscore one. I'm putting the location now. So we can only receive it. Sub inventory, we cannot populate at all because it's a receiving section. So otherwise the PO is there, what happens? We cannot deliver it at all. The consignment cannot be delivered. So 85 quantities of item one, I'm now making an unordered receipt. I'm now making an unordered receipt. Click on create receipt now. I'm now going to create a receipt now. So let me create a receipt now. So click on receipt and then fill up everything and then click on submit. What happens? The GRN number gets created. The supplier we had to populate. So we had to populate the supplier here. Mine go there. And then I'll now put underscore. And then sub one. And I give it a Supplier is now populated. Now what happens? You go and then submit it. So 85 quantities of item one has been received with the GR number of 1006. But if I try to go on and deliver it, we cannot deliver it now. And click on OK. And then if you want to deliver it, I click on it. And then I'm going to make a delivery now. Go to put away for 1006. Cheapo, it will not say. Because what happens, there is no purchase order at all again. So click on search now. We cannot make it. We cannot make it. So what happens? It doesn't allow you to make it now. Fine. What else? So now what happens? We will not create a purchase order for this, and then match it to the GR now. GRN number is 1006, so we had to make a purchase order. So go there, I will not create a purchase order on this now. For 85 quantities of item one. Click on done, click on done, and then come all the way. And then we'll now go and make a purchase order. Click on it and then create order now. Click on create order. So I'm now going to create an order for this unordered results now. The gate. Click on create order. And then here, what happens? You go there, supply is what? J30, J50, and then underscore sub one. And then click on create now. I'm now going to create the order. And go there. And then here, what happens? Go there. Click on plus now. The lines area, I will now add it. Item 185 quantities, I'm going to make it now. Fine, click on plus now. And then let me make it for 85 quantities. <clears throat> go there. Item is J50 underscore item 1. So here, quantity is 85. 85 is the quantity we have. And then here, what happens? This is the one. And then in the schedules, you populate the date now. And then public today's date now. Because it means the date now. Go there. Click on the schedules now. So click on this. I have no problem with date. I need it today. Let's say 19, 11, 17. We have. And now what happens? It should not be direct delivery. Remember, it should not be direct because what happens? It doesn't match the PO. So we made unordered receipts in the gate, and so what happens for unordered receipts? The PO should be standard receipt loading. Otherwise, it will not match at all. It will not even match. We have to make it. Again, the standard receipt loading. Standard receipt. And then here, what happens? You go okay. Click on okay. 2014 must be of a standard result routing, otherwise matching will fail, remember. When you want to match it to the GRN of 1006, it will not fail. Click on submit. So what happens, 2014 is now created for the anyway quantities of item one with the standard result routing. Now what happens, we go and then match it now. Fine, go to the results and then here what happens, we go there. Go to the match and order results now. So we have created the unordered results, so we are going to match it now. Only after matching, what happens, it will be possible for us to put away. Put away is possible. So click on the match and order results. And then here, I will now put the GRN number and then I'll query find 1006 is the GRN number. And issue. What happens? I'll now show you the bottom. I will now select and then match it. Match it to the PO number 2014. Click on match and then I'm going to match it to the 201. And document number is 2014 now. 2014 and then you tap. And then document line number is 1. And then what happens? Distribution. Number. 
If it is a direct delivery, it will not throw an error. Remember, it will not throw an error. If I click on submit, so it has to be a standard result product. If I click on match now, so I am now matching the unordered lines. The match transaction was created. Now we can very well deliver 1006 now. 1006 becomes eligible for a delivery. If I click on OK, I am going to deliver it now. Click on it. Now, what happens? Click on done. I can put away the 1006 now. I have done it at least once or twice in a month. I used to do it based upon urgency now. I put away it. Because the requester is the ultimate person, and then everybody has to facilitate the transactions for him now. Go there. 1006, and then click on search now. I'm doing it now. And then here, what happens? It's now available. Select it, and then we go to put away. <coughs> Fine, here, what happens? I'm going to put away everything. Inventory means sub inventory has to be given. Fine, go ask. So, this is the business process of unordered receipts. You make an unordered receipt and then bring it to the receiving section, and then you make a PO and then match it to the unordered receipts, and then afterwards you deliver. Sir. Yeah, okay. tell me. Yeah. Sir, can we check the supplier details in inventory? Supplier details in inventory? Okay. In inventory items. If I no. Yo, such a requirement. Uh, uh, yeah, if I randomly choosing on uh, item means, can I say that uh, where it comes from? Item and then you want okay. Yeah. There is a thing called transactions now. We go to the inventory. What happens? You cannot see all the summary transactions. Manage moment transact. Manage pending transact. Review completed transactions. You click on this inventory and then go to the review completed transactions. It will not show you PO wise, I think, not supplier wise. <coughs> click on it. I will not put the organization item is what J50 underscore item one. And then from date to this date, I can put it now. And then click on search. You can put on search what happens. It will not show you all the transactions. PO wise, I think. So you see transaction, uh, transaction ID number, item number, sub inventory. Uh, transaction quantity, transaction number, transaction, transaction type is the purchase order, source type is the account. So it's not showing you the supplier name actually. But what happens? You can ask the technical team to write a report. They will now make a report. Which what happens? You put this information on the top, whatever you have given a search criteria. You can put it, and then it has to show you supplier wise also. They will now make it. Okay. Who is a, a technical team guy for you? Uh, See, if I, uh, if I was asking for immediately ask them, fine. Don't wait. Do not keep the ball in your court at all. Fine. The standard one is not fine. If you open the purchase order, of course, he's not going to show you. But I want to have a ready made report. Yeah. Also. Fine. Ask them that. Yeah, no, they, yeah, yeah, no, they're okay. asking. Yeah. Well, while choosing an order management line, they're asking uh, whether I want to choose uh, location wise, I want to choose the item. Right. Like the, that they ask. The mail clearly. So, yeah, the, and the uh, expiry control also. One yeah. of the columns you want to display. The search criteria and the columns you want to play, please generate a report. That's it. Fine. The ball is in the sum of the score. And then if they are not doing it, ask them, point your manager now. Fine. Customer and manager. Point it. Fine. Do not keep anything with you at all. Fine. If anything is not ready, sir, can we can we do this in a first expiry first first, first out in this inventory? No. First expiry, first out, uh, based upon the days. I have not done it actually. Fine. There will be some ready-made reports available. If not available, what happens? You always go for a customization. Go there. There are some other reports which are available here. Manage lot, manage lot numbers. All these things are available yeah. here. But uh, some of yeah, them can, uh, can we pick ma ma manual lots and serial while putting order like that? That's what I'm saying. Right? Again, uh, we have to only make an R and D. So many things. Uh, if uh, something is not available, we have to customize it. Yeah. Oh, you are saying in the sales order, you want to manually place those lots. I think that must yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. That must be possible. Okay. Can, uh, uh, auto allocate is now going to automatically pick up. The item for the sales orders, but what happens? Disable auto allocate. We can manually allocate. No problem. No. Okay. I had to do an R and D on the sales orders actually. So once when I do it, I will not let you. Fine. Otherwise, that's not. Okay. But it must be available. It is available in Evis. Fine. And then naturally, it must be available in what happens fusion also. Manual choosing of your lots is very much possible. Okay. While picking, yeah. So we have the auto allocate and then auto create. And then what happens? Uh, auto create transaction delivery, all these things. Everything is almost similar concepts are available in, in Fusion as such. So, any doubts on this now? So, we have now completed the unordered receipt now. So, we'll now have a break. It's now 2 45. We'll now have a 20 minute break for a coffee and then we'll now assemble back at a 3 5 now. Okay, fine. Bye for the session now. We'll now meet in the next session at 3 5 now. It's 2 40 by 3 5. 20 minutes session. Have a good coffee and then come back. Yeah. Thank you.